Number 10. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles This family of teenage turtles who were taught martial arts by a giant rat don't get featured on our lists nearly enough, so we figured now was as good a time as any to give the heroes in a half shell a shout out. I could explain their deal, but there's no way I could explain it better than Chuck Lorre did in the following poem. Here we go. It's the lean green ninja team. On the scene, cool teens doing ninja things. So extreme. Out the sewer like laser beams. Get rocked with the shell-shocked pizza kings. Can't stop these radical dudes. The secret of the ooze made the chosen few emerge from the shadows to make their moves. The good guys win and the bad guys lose. Leonardo's the leader in blue. Does anything it takes to get his ninjas through. Donatello is a fellow, has a way with machines. Raphael has the most attitude on the team. Michelangelo, he's one of a kind and you'd know just where to find him when it's party time. Master Splinter taught them every single skill they need to be one lean, mean, green, incredible team. Number 9. The Bat Family When Batman set out on his mission to end crime and injustice in Gotham, he thought he would be doing it with only the help of his faithful butler, Alfred. In light of this, it is heartwarming to see the massive found family that Bruce has made for himself over the years. Comprised of sidekicks, he has trained to be some of the most powerful crime fighters on the planet, some of whom have stayed with Batman, and some of whom have gone off on their own to try and have a positive impact on the world in their own ways. There is Dick Grayson, the original Robin, who grew up to become the hero Nightwing, Jason Todd, who was Robin and then the anti-hero Red Hood, Barbara Gordon, the original Batgirl and Oracle, Tim Drake, the third Robin, who renamed himself after a fast food restaurant, as well as Bruce's son Damien, and other heroes such as Stephanie Brown, Cassandra Kane, Batwoman, and The Signal. Over the last decade, the Bat family has grown to a rather large size, with other heroes coming and going, but their expert combat and detective skills make them a powerful unit that will only grow stronger as the young members grow older and more members inevitably join. Number 8. Wolverine Family I love the Wolverine family, probably also just because I really love Wolverine. His family life is also one of the most complex and intriguing out there. There's a lot of trauma and combativeness, straight up villainy and aggression, as well in their dynamic. But at the end of the day, these are people who have found a way to overcome all of that and come together. I especially love how this was highlighted in the X Deaths and 10 Lives Wolverine series. Here we learn that one of Wolverine's worst fears has come true in a possibly alternate future. There he had to actually kill all of his own family members, being the only one to really survive, and really only going on to survive in the hopes of preventing the future from coming to pass, to save his kids, his family, and of course, everyone else besides. Number 7. The Shazam Family When the wizard Shazam chose Billy Batson to be his new champion, he imbued the young boy with magical powers that granted him the wisdom of Solomon, the strength of Hercules, the stamina of Atlas, the power of Zeus, the courage of Achilles, and the speed of Mercury. With these powers, Billy became the hero known as Shazam and began fighting crime. It was not long before Billy discovered that he could share his powers with the other children in his foster family, Freddy, Mary, Pedro, Eugene, and Darla, thus creating his own super team. While this family is undeniably powerful, the limits of the spell that enchanted them makes them split Billy's powers between them. So every time they team up, rather than being a team of six powerful heroes, they are merely six people evenly dividing the powers of one extremely powerful hero. So technically, the more family members they add to the team, the weaker each hero becomes. While this does force them to work together to compensate for this weakness, it does drive them near the bottom of this list along with the inexperience their young age gives them compared to our other featured families. Number 6. The Hulk Family The Hulk Family has to be on this list because after all, they are the strongest there is. Hulk has a pretty big family too, full of other friends, family, lovers, and exes who often tend to have their own Hulk personas, whether it's Bruce's cousin She-Hulk or his one-time father-in-law and enemy Red Hulk. Not all Hulks who are a part of the family tree have a persona either. There are 
also hulks like Scar, who is actually a hulk 100% of the time. We've seen glimpses into alternate realities as well, where Hulk actually proved to be strong enough to destroy entire worlds and universes within the multiverse. So yeah, there is everyone else, and then there are the hulks, who seem to operate on their own level when it comes to power and a capacity for destruction. Number 5. The Flash Family One of my all time favorite families, and one of the ones I definitely think is the most powerful, has to be the Flash Family. I just think speedsters in general are some of the most powerful superheroes out there because their superpower seems almost unstoppable if you fully utilized it. Super speed not just gives you enhanced strength and usually comes with enhanced durability, but it also means you have power similar to teleportation and time manipulation, and you can also use your super speed potentially to read and think super fast. And then there's of course there's also time travel. Basically, speedsters can be just big geniuses who can do everything with their muscles. It's crazy. With the Flash family, a lot of people are related, including Barry Allen and Wally West, who are uncle and nephew respectively, through Barry's wife Iris. Number four, the Fantastic Four. As if we could do a video about superhero families and not talk about Marvel's first family. After being exposed to cosmic rays, Reed Richards, his partner Sue Storm, her brother Johnny, and their friend Ben Grimm were granted bizarre powers and became the Fantastic Four. Each of them is formidable on their own, with Reed having the power to stretch his body in amazing ways while still being the smartest man on the planet, constantly inventing incredible new creations to help on their adventures. Sue can turn invisible and make powerful psionic force fields while Johnny is able to flame on, setting himself ablaze with extremely hot fires that he can control and even use to fly. Rounding out the team is The Thing, whose rocky form has given him superhuman strength and durability, giving him the ability to go toe to toe with some of the most powerful heroes and villains in the Marvel Universe. When working together, the Fantastic Four are an undeniably powerful team who travel together through alternate dimensions, space, and time to make new scientific discoveries and to keep the world safe from any threats they encounter. Number 3. Summers Family The Summers are known for being powerhouses, especially from a genetic standpoint. In this case, we are talking about a lot of psionic power due to the offspring of Scott Summers and Jean Grey. We're also talking about a lot of power coming from Scott's side of the family, though primarily with him and his two brothers being powerful in the realm of explosive energy bursts. Vulcan's powers, Scott's youngest brother, seem to be almost limitless when it comes to the amount of energy he can absorb and manipulate. Alex, aka Havoc, my favorite Summers brother I think, also has a ton of power and both he and Scott have also been attached to another powerhouse that people sometimes underestimate, Madeline Pryor. Maddie is known not just for being a powerful psionic, but also for her knowledge and skills with magic. In fact, recently she was also made the ruler of Limbo, replacing magic. Number 2. The New Gods of New Genesis The New Gods are a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to their family tree in terms of them being heroes versus villains. There are some prominent supervillains among them, such as Darkseid, Steppenwolf, Granny Goodness, and Grail, but opposing that, there are also tons of forces for good. And the good ones, of course, tend to be really good, such as Mr. Miracle, High Father, Orion, and of course, Scott Free's wife, Big Barda. These more heroic New Gods tend to hail from New Genesis, which is why we're focusing on that side, and be attached to the royal family there, that of High Father Isaiah. Orion himself is extremely powerful, getting his power directly from the source, which ties back to the creation of all things being an aspect of the presence, which is believed to be the ultimate creator of all things in DC Comics, possibly even beyond that. Orion is not the genetic offspring of High Father, but he was adopted by him as part of a treaty of peace with Apocalypse and obviously with his genetic father, Darkseid. Number 1. The Superman Family In the DC Universe, it is almost taken for granted that Superman is the most powerful superhero. He has all the best powers with super strength, speed, flight, invulnerability, and x-ray vision just to name a few. Superman on his own could take out most superhero teams, but the fact that he has an entire family to help him out shoots his family to the top of the list. His cousin Supergirl, his clone Connor, and his son John all have the same powers as him, making it already a formidable team. Add to that the found family members like Steel and Superwoman, and most teams would turn tail and run. 
Speaking of tails, this super family also has an extensive roster of super pets to help them out, with Crypto the dog, Streaky the cat, Comet the super horse, and Beppo the super monkey all being valuable members of the team. All in all, when working together the super family is a nearly unstoppable force, and that force is even more powerful if you are going off of the pre-crisis continuity power levels. And at number 10, the Marvel Family. One of the earliest families to ever grace the pages of comic books was the Marvel Family, a unit of relatives all a part of the Captain Marvel mythos, a character initially owned by Fawcett Comics that would later be owned by DC, who then changed his name to Shazam. Also not to be mistaken with Marvel's Captain Marvel, who existed after the company bought the copyright to the character's name. Anywho, in 1941 and 1942, Fawcett introduced teen spin-off characters for the hero, which included Captain Marvel Jr., his sidekick, and his sister Mary Marvel. Later Uncle Marvel would be introduced too, although he didn't have any superpowers. The Marvel family comics amassed a whole lot of popularity by the late 40s. There was even an animal in the mix, Hoppy the Marvel Bunny, who had 15 comic book appearances. If that wasn't a big enough family tree for you, the character also got three foster siblings that were introduced in Flashpoint, Eugene, Pedro, and Darla. Needless to say, these days they're known as the Shazam family, because you know, DC can't really use the Marvel family because it's so many legal battles with Captain Marvel slash Shazam. Alright, and number 9 we've got the Asgardians. Okay, yes, Asgardians are a race and not the family name, but you guys totally know who I'm referencing. Thor, his daddy Odin, and his brother Loki. Loki, ever the Asgardians, Guardian fashionista, you all know it's true, isn't technically Thor's brother by blood. Rather, he's the adopted son of Odin, after the Allfather had defeated Loki's biological father, King Laufey of the Giants of Jotunheim. He was raised alongside Thor as his brother, and once Thor gained the Asgard throne, Loki became a public enemy, and their sibling rivalry became more dangerous. Loki was eventually apprehended, and Odin trapped him inside of a tree, but the god of mischief managed to get out, and brought the fight to Thor, who was on Earth in New York City. These days, Loki has become a bit more of an anti-hero, something that's even enabled him to be worthy of lifting Molnir, which of course he used against Thor in a battle. The MCU has done a particularly good job of representing Thor and his family up on the big screen too, with Loki being arguably the best villain in the franchise, minus a certain big purple fiend who got his snap on in Infinity War. Up next, number 8, The Summers. The members of the Summers family tree are quite important when it comes to mutant history in the Marvel Universe. For starters, Scott Summers aka Cyclops and Jean Grey, known as Marvel Girl at the time, helped found the X-Men, and would go on to lead various factions of it over the years. Jean is one of the most powerful of the lot, an Omega level mutant, and the physical manifestation of the cosmic phoenix force. At times she's been one of the strongest forces in the Marvel Universe altogether. During a brief period where Cyclops got it on with a clone of Jean's named Madeline Pryor, it was an unfortunate time, they conceived a child, who ended up being Cable, Nathaniel Summers, after the baby was sent to the future. Cable would then adopt and raise Hope Summers, the first mutant to be born after the decimation event, when Scarlet Witch depowered almost all of the mutants in the world. Scott also has two brothers, Havoc, another character who was a key figure in the X-Men story, and Vulcan, Gabriel Summers, a supervillain and the youngest of the siblings. Also fun fact, all of the siblings powers, they don't really affect each other, which is like really kind of interesting. It's a thing that happens with some of the mutant families in the Marvel Universe, which is kind of cool. Alright moving on to number 7, the Pims. The Pims are a prime example of how intertwining many of the families in the Marvel Universe are with one another. They're also as unconventional of a family as you can get. So in the comics, Hank Pym married Janet Van Dyne, aka the Wasp. Hank and Janet never had kids, likely due to their constant marital problems and Hank, you know, having a mental breakdown and beating her that one time, but Hank is still seen as a father to a certain Marvel character. Ultron. In the comics, Hank is the one who builds the robot Ultron, who sees Hank as his dad, and Ultron goes on to create four other robots, one of which is the Vision. Enter the complicated family tree. Vision married Scarlet Witch, who used to be the daughter of Magneto, although that has now been reckoned, and is still the twin brother of Quicksilver. Quicksilver then married the sister of inhuman queen Medusa. It just only gets more complicated from there. And if you consider a bunch of alternate timelines, Vision can be linked to the Fantastic Four, who then can be linked to the Summers, who then can be linked to Apocalypse, all through marriage and adoption. So yeah, don't father robots lead to trouble in more ways than one. And at number 6, the Hulks. Another non-traditional family, Bruce Banner's clan of hulking monsters is pretty expanded, especially considering the character sometimes likes to just be on his own. When his cousin Jennifer Walters was in need of a blood transfusion, Bruce was there, but this resulted in her acquiring her own Hulk powers that the character could actually control much better than Bruce ever could. In addition to that, other characters with Hulk powers have a familial relation to Bruce. Both his ex-wife Betty Ross and her father, General Thaddeus E. Thunderbolt Ross, ended up also becoming Hulks. Red 
She Hulk and Red Hulk. In addition to that, in Planet Hulk, Banner marries an alien named Sierra, and she has two kids with him, Hirokawa and Scar. And at number five, the Waynes. While the Bat family may be the most iconic figurative family in comic book history, Bruce does have some familial blood ties that aren't dead. Sorry, had to. The Waynes are a family that have many roots all across the DC multiverse, typically varying Bruce's parents and altering Batman's origin story. But Prime Earth itself has a Wayne history that stretches back further than 1855, which is when brothers Solomon and Joshua Wayne purchased Wayne Manor. The new 52 Batman would briefly explore the life of Alan Wayne in 1922, concerning the family's history with the Court of Owls, an organization secretly working within Gotham City. By the time Bruce's dad Thomas Wayne married his wife Martha, he was the only living descendant of the family until Bruce was born. The new 52 would also explore the possibility of Bruce having a long lost brother, a sibling who was supposed to have died right after being born. Years later, when Bruce hooked up with Talia Al Ghul, it was later revealed that she didn't love him, and was only in the relationship in order to mix the Al Ghul and Wayne bloodlines, resulting in her mothering Damian Wayne, who became the new Robin after he chose to live with his father. And the feels between Bruce and Damian are the best. Bruce is often depicted as deeply caring for his son, and minus, you know, putting him in danger while fighting crime, he's actually a pretty solid parent occasionally. With Alfred heavily involved in the mix and Bruce's other adopted sons of the Bat family, he and Damian's dynamic often is an entertaining one to read. Up next, number four, the Inhuman Royal Family. Also known as the House of Aegon, the Inhuman Royal Family are descendants of the former ruler of Inhumans, a race that was genetically altered by the Kree centuries ago. Inhumans predominantly kept themselves hidden from the rest of humanity. The family consists of Black Bolt, the king of the Inhumans, Medusa, the queen, who is also cousins to her husband Black Bolt, but we'll just like not talk about that. Crystal, Medusa's sister, Maximus, Black Bolt's brother, Ahura, the king and queen's son, and a slew of cousins. Karnak, Triton, and Unspoken, the former power hungry Inhuman king who was banished. And then there's Lockjaw, their dog, who has the power of teleportation and is overall super awesome. Just look at him. Up next at three, the Magneto family. Magneto's lineage is an impressive one. Aside from being one of the most complex and powerful villains in the Marvel Universe, his twin children, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, who initially were the kids of the wizard, but then that was later retconned, were born to Magneto's estranged wife and were adopted by Romani parents. That was retconned again, to them being children who were genetic experiments, led to believe that Magneto was their father. But long before that, they would enter the Marvel Universe as reluctant villains, part of Magneto's Brotherhood of Evil Mutants in X Men issue 4 in 1964, uninterested in Magneto's ideologies, and later became members of the second iteration of the Avengers team, alongside Hawkeye and team leader Captain America. Their family dynamic would continue to be explored over the years, especially in the House of M story arc, which saw Scarlet Witch altering all of reality to give mutants their heart's desires. And as you can imagine, Magneto's desires were ones that established mutant dominance over humans, to say the least. This family tree extends down to the Maximoffs, Wiccan and Speed, the children that Wanda Maximoff, aka Scarlet Witch, had with the Vision prior to their split. Quicksilver also had an empath daughter named Luna, whose mother was the Inhuman Princess, Crystal. Aside from them, Magneto has another daughter named Polaris, most well known for her mental health issues and relationship with Havoc, who is a Summers. They're all connected. <laughs> Moving on to number two, we have the Richards. Easily the most powerful family on this list, the Richards go beyond just being an adorable family unit. They're a succinct team. Nothing better illustrates this than the family's efforts to rebuild the Marvel multiverse after the end of Secret Wars. Many often consider the Fantastic Four to be comic's first family, consisting of Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic, Sue Storm's Invisible Woman, Ben Grimm, The Thing, and Sue's brother, Johnny Storm, The Human Torch. Reed and Sue are one of the oldest Marvel couples, and they've had two kids, Franklin and Valeria Richards, both of whom are crazy powerful. Franklin is a mutant with beyond Omega level reality manipulating and psionic powers. Valeria is a genius at smarting her father at a young age, along with a whole arsenal of other powers. Ben often acts as an uncle to the kids, and Victor Von Doom is the godfather of Valeria, having helped deliver the child and thus naming her after a woman he once loved and also savagely sacrificed. And finally, in at number one, the Kents. Superman's family has always been pretty integral to his history, much like Bruce Wayne's. But these days, Clark Kent is boasting a new family unit, since rebirth with Lois Lane and their son, Jonathan Samuel Kent, named after both of their dads. The firstborn son of Superman, John Kent is one of the most adored newer characters to debut in the DC Universe, and the trio's family dynamic is oh so endearing. And Jonathan would go on to become the new Superboy. The family unit first appeared during 2015's Convergence story event as the pre-Flashpoint continuity Superman who, along with Lois, had been trapped on another planet where he did not have powers, and eventually ended up in the Earth Zero timeline. When DC relaunched itself yet again, DC established Superman as the pre-Flashpoint Superman, meaning we began to see a lot more of Jonathan, which included him becoming buddies with Batman's son, Damian Wayne, and they have the best bromance ever. Batman has one of the best networks of heroes around. He's just really good at inspiring and attracting or finding the right people to mentor and turn into heroes. All of them have grown up to become their own unique kinds of heroes, each embodying an aspect of Batman that inspires them, but becoming a hero in their own right. Batman is one of those heroes that 
if he dropped dead tomorrow, like the premise for the Gotham Knights trailer, we know Gotham would likely be fine. There may be only one Batman, but he has a team of bats waiting in the wings to take his place and cover him when needed. Pardon those puns. Number 10, Signal. Duke Thomas's parents were victims of the Joker, but before that, years before, they helped Batman during his zero year, rescuing him and taking care of him. After Duke's parents were driven insane by the Joker, he became a vigilante, joining the team known as the Robins. Batman later offered him the opportunity to join the Bat family, and Duke Thomas took up the mantle, Signal. He also found out he had metahuman abilities, making him one of the few superpowered members of the Bat family. Signal's power allow him to perceive light differently from most humans. He can view light at superhuman speeds, giving him sort of clairvoyant abilities. Number 9, Batwoman. Batwoman is Kate Kane, Batman's cousin in the comics. This version of the character was part of a redesign first appearing in 2006. She was originally a member of the military who was discharged after they learned she was gay. Since then, with the help of her father and sometimes the help of her cousin, Bruce Wayne, she became a vigilante going as Batwoman. Batwoman is not just a skilled combatant but also boasts of genius level intellect, like many of the other Batman family members, and can speak multiple languages. She has an indomitable sense of will that has allowed her to withstand supernatural and magical influences and is just as stealthy as the bat himself. Number 8, Red Hood. Red Hood was originally Batman's second Robin. His civilian name is Jason Todd, and he even ended up being adopted by Bruce. During his time as Robin, he ended up leaving Batman and heading out on a journey to find his birth mother. On that adventure, which Batman ended up finding him and joining him on, he ran into the Joker. His mother sold him out, and the Joker then beat Jason Todd almost to death before blowing him and his mother up with a bomb. Batman arrived too late to save Jason or his mother, and this has remained a failure which Batman considers one of his greatest. Todd would later return as Red Hood, being resurrected in part and guided for a time by Talia al Ghul. When he did return to Gotham, it was originally as somewhat of a villain. However, Jason would eventually join the Bat family again, having more of an anti-hero status as someone who isn't opposed morally to killing those villains that he feels deserves it, and bringing his own brand of justice to Gotham. Jason isn't against using guns, but also doesn't need them to be a badass. He has also been shown to be highly skilled with a sword. Duke retrained him after he was resurrected, also granting him the ability to be in control of his mind on a deeper level, giving him telepathic resistance and strong mind control defenses. Number 7, Damian Wayne. Damian Wayne is the son of Batman and Talia al Ghul, daughter of one of Batman's greatest enemies and sometimes ally, Ra's al Ghul or Ra's al Ghul, depending on how you like to say it. Damian Wayne was dropped on Batman's doorstep when he was just a child, and having been raised by his mother, a skilled assassin, and raised along with the League of Assassins themselves, he proved to be a problem and challenge to Bruce originally, as he had both a sense of entitlement surrounding his being a Wayne, and had no aversion to killing people. Due to his training from a young age, he has proved his prowess and efficiency in combat as a deadly opponent to those villains he comes up against. He has made quick work of well well known Batman villains like Victor Zaz and Man Bat, he's also proved in the past to be a worthy adversary for other Robins as well. Although now he sees them more like brothers, so that's good. Number 6, Orphan. One of the deadliest members of Batman's team in the same vein of Damien actually, but without the attitude really. Orphan is Cassandra Kane. She is the daughter of David Kane and Lady Shiva and was rigorously trained from a young age to become a killing machine. She was not permitted to speak and never taught how to while growing up, instead communicating solely through body language, making her an expert combatant as she can use one's body language to read how and when they will attack. It's also very hard to intimidate Cassandra when it comes to the shock factor as she was desensitized to death and violence from a very young age, being forced to witness multiple murders. She also has the potential to high five you hard enough to break your hand. Fortunately, she's learned not to do that. Number 5, Batgirl. Batgirl isn't even just a Batgirl. She has been known by both the Batgirl mantle and her codename Oracle, a genius hacker, computer whiz, and master data sleuth for Batman and the leader of the Birds of Prey after she became paralyzed by the Joker from the waist down when he shot her through the spine. She not only has a brilliant mind, but she also is a skilled combatant. Even before she was Batgirl, she was known as a driven and determined young woman by those she trained with. Before even becoming Batman's protege, she studied martial arts and battle 
ballet, both of which helped to provide her with the strength, agility, and flexibility needed later on in combat. Babs' reflexes are so sharp, we've even seen her dodge bullets in combat, and easily disarm opponents who are armed with guns. Truly a Bat family member that Batman would be proud of. Even when she felt shame surrounding letting herself be shot by the Joker, Batman was still by her side. She was worried he would also be disappointed in her like she kind of was with herself, but he only expressed concern for her well-being. Barbara rarely, if ever, disappoints Batman. Number 4. Red Robin Tim Drake is known for being one of the smartest Robins around. He is a brilliant detective, in fact so good that he is expected to be on the same level as one of the world's greatest detectives, Batman himself. In fact, it's also been implied that Tim Drake will likely one day surpass Batman when it comes to his detective skills. The way that he originally became Robin was through discovering the secret identities of both Batman and Robin, who was Jason Todd at the time. Following Todd's death, Drake noticed that Batman seemed to need a Robin to help give him balance, and then ended up convincing the Dark Knight to take him under his wing, making him the third Robin of Batman. Number 3. Nightwing Dick Grayson has taken Batman's place before, and what's more, he was fairly good at it. In fact, he's probably one of the most likely currently to be the person to take over for Batman, as long as he's got his memories, which have been gone more often than not in recent years. Dick was Batman's first Robin, and through the comics we've seen him become one of Batman's steadfast allies, almost appearing like an adoptive son to Bruce, destined to take up the mantle of Batman one day. Well, actually. Maybe, if we're lucky, and the writers let it happen, we'll actually get to see him take up the mantle on a more permanent level. That'd be pretty cool. Number 2. Azrael After Batman's back was broken by Bane, Sean Paul Valley was the one who Bruce turned to to take up the Batman mantle in his absence. Jean Paul proved a powerful force when it came to his time as Batman, so powerful in fact that it took Batman Robin and Nightwing to take him down. The final showdown, of course, came down to Azrael and Batman, and in the end, Jean Paul surrendered the armor, cape, and cowl. Number 1. Alfred Pennyworth Alfred might not have any superpowers, but he really doesn't need any to be considered one of the most powerful and influential members of the Batman family. Alfred is Batman's butler, his guide, his father figure, and has saved him in more than one way many times throughout the comics. As we can see currently in the Joker War story, arc from the 2016 Batman run, which will be ending shortly, Batman is lost without Alfred. Alfred also has tons of past military experience and was a professional actor, and was sought after by the Wayne family to take his father, Jarvis's place as their butler. In the Injustice series, Alfred also reveals there is no length he would not go to when it comes to protecting Bruce Wayne, who he thinks of as a son. After Superman breaks Batman's back, it's Alfred who forces him to back down, ingesting a pill which grants him superhuman strength and and durability, allowing him to break Superman's nose. Yeah, Alfred's a badass. For someone known as the last son of Krypton, Superman sure does have a lot of family members. Number 10, Streaky the Supercat. When Linda Lee, aka Kara Zor-El, aka Supergirl, started experimenting on a piece of kryptonite in an attempt to render it inert and harmless, she thought she had failed and threw the chemical doused stone into a nearby forest. Little did she know that her experiments had transformed the meteor into kryptonite X. When her cat, Streaky, was wandering the woods, he came across the discarded kryptonite, and exposure to it granted him superpowers. Streaky used his powers mostly to have fun, but is capable of incredible feats of strength. Unfortunately, the effects of Kryptonite X are temporary, and Streaky needs to consistently re-expose himself to it in order to maintain his powers, or else he will return to being a regular cat. Streaky made 49 appearances in the Earth-1 continuity before being erased in the Crisis on Infinite Earths. Although a gender-bent version of Streaky later appeared in the Prime Earth continuity in 2018's Super Sons Annual No. 1. No. 9. Lana Lang Superwoman. The childhood sweetheart of Clark Kent from his Smallville days, Lana Lang and Superman have remained close through the years, although they both went their separate ways with different romantic partners. When the new 52 version of Superman died, he released energy from his body that was absorbed by both Lois Lane and Lana Lang. Although they were given slightly different powers, Lana got the standard super strength, flight, and invulnerability, as well as the ability to convert solar radiation into electromagnetic energy. She could then manipulate 
manipulate this energy to shoot electric blasts and to become and travel as a bolt of lightning. She and Lois both took on the mantle of Superwoman, but this iteration of Lois was soon killed, leaving Lana as the only Superwoman. Although this weakness was eventually overcome, Lana suffered from a power instability that caused the use of her powers to slowly kill her, making her heroics come at a great personal cost for the character. Number 8. Comet the Super Horse Our next entry takes us back to the days of ancient Greece, where a centaur named Byron fell in love with a powerful sorceress. He saved her life from an evil wizard and asked to be transformed into a human as a reward. The sorceress crafted a potion that would turn his horse half human, but the evil wizard switched the potion out with one of his own that did the reverse, permanently turning him into a horse. To soften the blow of this, the sorceress gave him another potion that gave him immortality, as well as the powers of telepathy, flight invulnerability, super strength, and speed. The wizard then trapped him on an asteroid, where he remained until he was accidentally freed by Supergirl. Byron became obsessed with the Girl of Steel and returned to Earth to find her. She named the horse Comet, and the two worked together a few times before he eventually became human and began romancing Kara. Although he doesn't have the disadvantages that come with his powers like some of the previous entries on this list, he is missing some of the other signature superpowers that cause the other super family members to outrank him. Plus, there's no way I was giving a higher slot to a horse that wants to take a roll in the hay with its owner. Number 7. Crypto the Super Dog When Superman's father Jor-El discovered that Krypton would be destroyed, he came up with a plan to create a rocket that could safely transport his son to the planet Earth. Jor-El created a prototype of this rocket and decided to test it on the family dog, Crypto. Crypto's rocket veered off course and therefore did not arrive on Earth until Kal-El was a teenager. Crypto became Super Dog and accompanied Superboy on many adventures, continuing to help even once the Boy of Steel had grown into Superman. This makes Crypto Superman's longest serving and most consistent sidekick across Superman's original continuity. Crypto has all of the powers of the Man of Steel, such as strength, speed, flight, and vulnerability, super breath, and heat vision, but as he is a normal sized dog, these abilities are proportionate to his size, making him less strong than humanoid Kryptonians. Although initially wiped from continuity in the Crisis on Infinite Earths story, a modern Crypto did eventually return to comics in early 2000s. Unlike his pre Crisis counterpart, this Crypto did not have human intelligence and therefore was actually actually more dangerous as he would attack and bite his enemies without attempting to rein in his strength, causing Superman to keep him at the Fortress of Solitude until he could properly train him. Ok, no more super pets. Promise. Number 6. Steel When Superman died at the hands of Doomsday in the iconic Death of Superman arc, several different people took up the mantle to try and keep Metropolis safe. One of these heroes was John Henry Irons. A former weapons designer, Irons quit his job and took up work as a construction worker when he realized the damage his weapons were causing. After being rescued by Superman from a workplace accident, Irons decided to dedicate his life to making the world a better place. When Superman died, he constructed a steel super suit for himself and began fighting crime in Metropolis. The suit allowed him to fly and enhanced his speed and durability, allowing him to hold his own in a fight with the Eradicator. If that were where the story ended, he may have been lower on the list, but years later, after suffering a horrible injury, he was surgically modified with alien tech which made him a literal man of steel and gave him powers such as energy absorption, mechanokinesis, and force field projection. He is also the only character on this list to have been played by Shaquille O'Neal in a movie. Number 5. Matrix In an alternate universe where Kal-El had died as a child, there was no one to protect the Earth when Kryptonian supercriminals escaped from the Phantom Zone. No one except that Earth's Lex Luthor, who was not evil. Luthor used an artificial life form known as the Protoplasmic Matrix to create a champion for his planet who resembled his dead love, Lana Lang. He named her Matrix, and she became her Earth's Supergirl. When she was unable to defeat the Kryptonians, Luthor brought in New Earth's Superman to try and save the planet. They were unsuccessful, and this alternate Earth was left devoid of life. Superman took Matrix back to his Earth, where she became that con continuity Supergirl. She had many of the same powers as Superman, such as flight, speed, and strength, but lacked some of his other powers like heat vision and arctic breath. She made up for these with other powers, such as the ability to shapeshift and turn herself invisible. Combined with her telekinesis and force field and energy projection abilities, she was an extremely powerful member of the super family, although unlike other members, she was vulnerable to fatigue and was prone to identity crises that caused her to be taken advantage of by various supervillains. Number 4. Connor Kent, Superboy Another hero who appeared during 
of Superman's apparent death at the hands of Doomsday, Connor is a clone based on the genetic templates of Superman and Lex Luthor. Created by Cadmus for use in the event of Superman's death, this teenage clone was initially arrogant and difficult to deal with until he was taken under the wing of Steel and Matrix who taught him the finer points of actually being a hero. Although he appeared to have all of the Man of Steel's powers, it was later revealed that his only power was tactile telekinesis. Although this ability was first introduced by John Byrne as one of Superman's minor powers that he uses to cause the objects he left to retain their structural integrity, allowing him to say, pick up a plane without punching through it like a pin, Superboy also used this power to drag himself through the air, simulating flight, and to create a force field around himself, simulating invulnerability. He did eventually get real Kryptonian powers, which allowed him to do his super feats in a more straightforward fashion. Number three, Kara Zor-El, Supergirl. Kara Zor-El is Superman's cousin. When the planet Krypton was destroyed, Kara's home, Argo City, was spared thanks to the efforts of her father. Although due to radiation, the city was slowly turning to kryptonite. When the city was deemed past the point of no return, her father pulled a page out of his brother's book and built a rocket, sending Kara to Earth. She became Supergirl and was placed in an orphanage by Superman as part of her cover, although she was eventually adopted by the Danvers family. Supergirl has all of the same powers as Superman, although if we apply the same logic from our crypto entry, where proportionate size affects the abilities, her stature would make her slightly less strong than her cousin. Although, for a time she was more powerful as she had all of these abilities as well as the powers of a red lantern ring, which would have all but guaranteed her the number one slot. However, since she no longer has the red lantern powers, she is stuck in the number three slot. But hey, at least she ranked higher than the horse. Number two, Clark Kent, Superman. Look, if you've made it this far into such a niche video, I'm assuming you know who Superman is. So I'm just gonna rush through this one. Blah, 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 dying planet. Blah, 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 rocket to Earth. Blah, 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 Smallville. Blah, 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 up, up, and away. Superman is the benchmark that all of the characters on this list are being compared to. So it only makes sense that he would rank so high. He has an incredibly vast set of powers that is even more impressive if you're looking at his pre-crisis iteration. If any Thing, you're probably confused as to why he isn't number one on this list, but that spot is reserved for another Superman. Number one, John Kent the new Superman. The son of Lois Lane and Clark Kent, Jonathan Samuel Kent has been a hero since an early age, becoming Superboy when he was 10 years old. Although he initially struggled to control his powers, he became a great hero in his own right, often teaming up with his best friend, Damian Wayne, aka Robin, as the Super Sons. After an incident involving a black hole, he was imprisoned by the villain Ultraman for several years before he escaped and returned to Earth. Although it had been years for him, it had only been a few weeks on Earth. The now 17-year-old old was tasked by his father with protecting the Earth while he went away to deal with an extraterrestrial threat, and John became the new Superman. Although one might assume that as someone who is half human and half Kryptonian, he would be weaker than full Kryptonians, tests that were run on him before his birth by Batman revealed that his unique physiology would actually be an advantage, giving him the potential to be even more powerful than the original Man of Steel. Another way that he is more powerful than Kal-El is his ability to become more involved in Earth's issues. As the original Superman explained to his son in Superman, Son of Kal-El, number two, the reason he had refrained from involving himself more in many of Earth's issues and conflicts was that as an alien born on Krypton, he didn't feel he had the right to impose his beliefs on the people of Earth and should instead lead by example. He went on to say that as someone who was born on Earth, John could involve himself more and end up having more of a positive effect on Earth than even the original Superman. Music